what is the Whistle Farm and what's its purpose? Well, the Whistle Farm started when the boys in the company in Britain wanted to manufacture a steam horn, and I had to develop a steam horn. Until then, I used a portable air compressor outfit and went all over the claim here and uh, on the tree farm and recorded at different places. But with a steam whistle, I had to have a steam boiler. So I found this old logging boiler that was sitting here, and I utilized it. Now, what is the idea of having this complex way out here for a start? Well, you just couldn't blow these whistles anywhere near people. They're, they can be heard 15 or 20 miles, and uh, it would disturb people, and they'd complain. You have to get along with people. So this is your own complex here? Yes, I don't actually own the land. I have a lease from Crown Zeller back and permission to use this place as long as I want it for a whistle farm. Well, what is your background that gives you special knowledge to deal with whistles? I mean, a mechanical engineer isn't normally the sort of person well, who deals I, with this. I took music, and I studied music, and I felt that if a, if a whistle could, say, play C natural, uh, E natural, and G natural, it would have a major chord, and it would sound better than just a lot of noise. And most people have been just making whistles just to make a noise. Well, I thought they should be musical, like a pipe organ. I, I like anything like that. Now, how about the system? The boilers, I believe, are the basis of this. Could you describe the organization of the system? Well, and to begin with, we have an old uh, a logging, it's an old but beautiful, mind you, a logging skidder boiler. It was left here. They, this was the last one they used. So I bought it from them and fixed it up right where it was standing, right here on this ground. And this is the old sled that was under it to move it from place to place. And then I fixed the boiler up. I came out on weekends and Sundays and worked on it and brought a boiler maker out and pipe fitters and I got the boiler working. Then I got a house built over it. And then I put air pumps off locomotives in order to get compressed air and to, uh, and to get these whistles working. I had to test them. Well, now I tried testing them in town and you have to phone the police and the bridge and the harbor commission and it just doesn't work. So out here, I come out at night all my original development was done after uh, 10 and 11 o'clock at night. I have lights here and I'd steam up and go uh, 8, 10 miles up this road or over this way or up this way and I could record them from distances. And I have an automatic uh, George, I call it, that blows the whistles. I put it on clock and the clock, they all come on on code and I can go away from here and in fact I can run this myself. But my brother normally comes out and helps me and he does the whistle blowing while I do the tape recording. Well, you started this farm in 1960. What projects have you done since then? The uh, first project in 1960 was this uh, big steam horn over here. These were done for ships like the Queen Mary. And the, the next project was the, this, uh, this family of horns here. These are the ferry and the boat horns. These are, uh, this is a whole musical family of horns that run from, uh, way down low A and up through middle C and right up to about the first C above middle C in this group. And this was the one before the whistle farm. This one was done for the railroads. This one was done here for, uh, for smaller ships. And then you can combine by having uh, two or three families of whistles. Incidentally, you never mix families. They don't make a good product. Well, know? what exactly is a family? Well, a family of whistles, uh, the, 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 the horns are generated on, by a certain formula. And if you follow this formula, you run a whole family out. Then you run into the next size, you use a different formula. For instance, the steam horns are all the same family. You can see they're the same shape. They give the same tone character. Well, what establishes the family identity? Is it the steam pressure no, or the, the notes? It's the, the shape, note. it's the shape of the horn that gives the overtones or harmonics in the whistle. You have to have the right harmonics to get a musical note. Otherwise, it's just like a foghorn. It's dead. It's, you know, it's, it's got to have a sort of a music in it. Well, what do you account for this? Why should horns be musical? I've never thought of them as having musical well, relevance. Yeah, all. well, well, to give you an idea, I have a foghorn. Actually, it's one of these big horns. I blew down at, at Albert Head for the, the AIDS Navigation Federal Government boys. And when they blew their foghorn, which is a raucous sound, and I was using an Ampex tape recorder in stereo, it, it, everything was dead after they finished. With my horns blowing, believe it or not, but the birds sing right through it. They, it seems to be natural. A, a natural note is, is, is natural. And for instance, the petals of flowers are natural curves. You, and anything in nature must be natural. And so the horn must have a natural sound, and it's pleasing, and people 
people accept it. Well, how about a horn that uh, signals danger? Perhaps some people might say it might be better to have something that is jarring and cacophonous. Well, you do this, then you, you, you separate your notes quite wide. You'll use a, you'll use a middle C and say uh, a B flat, or a middle C and uh, one just below the octave, and it'll be raucous then. It's the most dis dissonant place on a piano is just under an octave. This is what you do for a disaster whistle. What would that horn be for? Uh, any kind of equipment? Uh, well, th those horns would be used on large ships uh, uh, up to sizes of the Queen Mary would be fitted with uh, I'd like to get this horn on the the new Q4 they're building in Britain. Well I thought I've always seen pictures of for instance the Queen Mary when she blows I thought it was just alongside the stack was that vertical kind of whistle. Well, that's the old-fashioned organ whistle but they took too much steam it's not modern you've got to be modern today and use no steam you've got to be efficient. What makes the actual sound inside the whistle? <laughs> there is a diaphragm and compressed air lifts the diaphragm off the seat and it sends a puff of air up the horn, exactly the same as playing a trombone. And then the horn, being a musical shape, amplifies the sound and it couples the energy of the compressed air with the atmosphere at the end, the same as a loudspeaker. Well, did you mention what material the diaphragm the is The diaphragm in this is made of a stainless steel, a, a 301 type stainless. It's rolled at Welland, Ontario, especially for this job. We developed a special steel for the diaphragm. In Montreal, they've just changed over their police cars, I understand, and perhaps ambulances, to the European kind of klaxons, the uh, type of Well, that's sound, a kind yeah. of a cross between an Italian bus and an English cuckoo, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly sounds that way, but it's caused quite a controversy in Montreal yes, would, about this would, sound. It it's not a Canadian sound. Well, what sort of sound would you design for I would make a, I would make a high-pitched 800 cycle small air whistle, and uh, it would blow intermittently. In, in what way intermittently? Uh, well, a steady note doesn't uh, bring as much uh, attention as whoop, 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 sort of a... But it, make it very high-pitched. Well, what would be the advantage of this over the conventional sirens that we hear now? Uh, the high-pitched whistle doesn't carry as far as a low-pitched whistle. Therefore, it, you only want the sound to be within a block, a block or 500 feet, and a high-pitched whistle wouldn't go beyond this, but it would be very effective in a closed area. This would be far better than disturbing the whole town with a, with a wah-woo type of whistle, wouldn't it? Yes, but uh, the question I asked was, the, the sirens we have now on uh, ambulances yeah. and, and fire yeah. uh, engines and such things, isn't this effective? I think it's quite effective, but uh, some people want to do something different, I guess. Well, that's this much is progress, you know. You've got to keep changing. Mr. Swanson, has your obsession with whistles caused you any embarrassment at any time? Many, many times. I've had some real dilly, dillies. Can you remember one? Well, I, you know, I got a, I got a, was coming off the ferry one time, and uh, incidentally, you know, I got one a uh, train whistle on my car, you see, and uh, I was coming off the ferry, and I went to blow it at somebody I knew, you know, and the damn valve stuck open, and it blew all the way off. Of course, I had to, you know... Do the police ever give you any trouble with this? I mean, it must be quite well, alarming to this. I blew it on Granville Street one day, and of course it's under the hood, you can't see it, and the policeman said, well, what, what was that? I said, what? I, I didn't hear anything. And you're hearing things, man. And so he walked away, and I kind of laughed to myself. Is it a regular train whistle? Oh, it's a regular train whistle. It was on the PG for quite some time. Was it difficult to hook up in your car? Not too bad. That uh, I got a little air compressor in there, and it... Uh, it sounds exactly like a train, you know. Are there any people interested in such things? Have you ever sold a, a car whistle? Well, I, I, I have a friend in the old country who makes these whistles of mine, and he said, I'd like to have one for one Rolls Royce, you know. So I made one for him, and I chrome-plated it, and I sent it over to him. And when I went over there, he didn't have it on the old girl. And I said, why? Well, he said he'd, he'd ask the police, and the police said, you can't put it on. Well, I said, well, I just damn well put it under the hood. He says, you can't do that, you know. You can't do that. So they apparently live up to the law over there, but I don't always do it myself. But. So this Swanson whistle in England is just lounging without being used? Lounging without being used. That's terrible. Perhaps you should have it back here. You could put it on your car. Oh, don't worry. I got it back. I got a spare, you see.